horse on Christmas morning. Craig hadn't been much company before Christmas, but with all those works events he had to attend. And he'd sloped off to his parents, leaving Fiona, who had to work up to Christmas Eve and then the day after. He hadn't even offered to stay when once he'd have done anything to be beside his face, Scottish Pixie. She was none of those things now, except for maybe a hint of a Lowlands accent. Where she lost some of her identity, she had gained many pounds and picked up an unnatural cynicism. Fiona looked out over the tracks at King's Cross and St Pancras as people headed north out of the city. Lights flickered across the old stables and canal and she shivered at the prospect of her jog along the waterway. There was a cheering prospect of meeting Walter the photographer, but he probably headed home to Scotland. If she leaned right out of the window, she could see the whole of her chosen route up York Way and onto the canal, then towards Camden, before looping back. Aside from Walter, there was also the possibility of the horse. She had seen the magnificent beast along the canal, presumed it was used to pull the barges on the underground stretch between Angel and King's Cross. Once she had nearly reached it, but it seemed to disappear after slipping beneath one of the short road bridges. That was how she'd met Walter, nearly knocking him over as she rounded the bridge corner herself. He was setting up some shots before sunset of the light refracting from the newly built block onto the canal. The horse! The white horse! Oh yeah, I see it all the time. I can't say I noticed it tonight. But then, he paused to indicate the camera. I was paying close attention to this. Her heart jumped slightly, because his voice betrayed the unmistakable burr of the highlands. She looked more closely at him, and thought how beautiful he appeared, with the sinking sun blazing in the sky behind him. His blonde hair caught the rays, and the loose, casual clothes barely concealed a very athletic figure underneath. Only his smile was imperfect, truly Scottish in its jumbled disarray, but to Fiona, even this possessed a charm of familiarity. I'm s sorry, she stammered. I'm interrupting you. No, hardly at all. One rarely meets a fellow pig. He slung his counter to the side of his blue jacket and put his hand. I'm Walter O'Hoy. She took it. Fiona Rassi, nice to meet you. Her accent slipped into a comfortable lowland brogue. How long have you been in exile? Fiona laughed. Feels like forever, but six years. His good humour was infectious, and Fiona slipped into an easy conversation with him. As the two emigres lounged against the bridge wall, she told him about her work, her flat. She even intimated that things were not all that happy in her relationship, though part of her wanted him to think that there wasn't one at all. It was as if Walter had magically turned on a tap, out of which all her joys, sorrows, disappointments and triumphs since arriving in the city poured out. Fiona wasn't even sure how much she told of her story in the city, or whether it just raced through her mind. Walter smiled and nodded, and that was enough. It's no easy in the great way, and is it? I love bits of London, but I miss open space and water. They didn't talk about the horse. That was something they could return to at their leisure. They were both clearly interested in it. Fiona was far keener to learn more about Walter than in that at the moment with any white horse. She felt so strongly that they'd see each other again that she made the elementary mistake of not getting his phone number, only realising this after she had left him and was jogging off towards Camden Town, thinking of Walter's easy charm and the unself-conscious way he flashed his shipwrecked dentistry. She was so happy to see him that Christmas Eve that she ran up to him, smiling, checking herself and throwing her arms around him. Thought you'd be away home, she cried. Hello, my Caledonian lovely. I am, but got half an hour before the last train. I like the peace and quiet down here. He smiled at her and said, I think I've solved the horse mystery. It comes out from the tunnel in the morning and wanders the tow path towards Camden and disappears and makes it back in the evening. I say ten o'clock tomorrow and you catch it by York Way. He looked along the canal and said, Anyway, what are you doing here tonight? She explained the work and carried on blushing slightly. As to the running, oh, you know, got to get trim. Maybe riding would help. 
I used to love riding when I was a child. He looked confused and let his eyes linger over her curves. Why, well, you look pretty slim to me, he said. There was a slight pause after this, which Walter filled by suggesting they walk back towards the station. He waved to her from the end of the path as she sauntered home. She would have found she quite enjoyed being alone the night before Christmas. She debated going to midnight mass at St Pancras Church before settling in with a bottle of Rioja to give herself a taste of the war Mediterranean on a cold night in N1. She watched the last trains go out and the station shut before calling her mum to wish her a happy Christmas. She woke early and was delighted to see a few spots of snow struggling to fall. After a leisurely breakfast, she thought about the horse and what Walter had said. It didn't take her long to get dressed and reach to a She struck out for the York Way and thought she'd surprise the horse with some sugar lumps. He was magnificent and white, something just past the entrance to the Caledonian Road Bridge. Funnel walked slowly towards the horse, which stopped to look at her but made no move as she settled up to it and began caressing his head. She looked around for its owner. Surely there was, must be someone about. The horse wore no bridle. She knew that many animals had microchips under their skin as proof of identity. She felt along the creature's neck for evidence of one. As she did this, the horse lowered its neck, almost as she felt, inviting her to mount it. It had been years since she'd ridden a horse, and she felt incredibly self-conscious. But being Christmas, there was no one around, and the horse seemed to be pleading with her to climb on his back, making soft whinnies and nudging her. After a final glance around, Fiona climbed on, grabbing its mane to keep her balance. Once there, however, she felt solidly in place, as if something adhesive on the horse's back was keeping her on. This was reassuring because, as soon as she was comfortable, the horse began to canter, gathering speed as they headed towards Camden Town. Just before passing under St Pancras Way, it turned rapidly and galloped in the opposite direction. Fiona felt the rush of the wind as they hurled along, her inner thighs tingling where they dug in for greater grip. She felt free and alive and more exhilarated than she had done for years. This was like a first kiss, or the rush of a drug or a dizzying revelation of beauty. It was fantastic. It was like flying. Fiona was ecstatic. Her hair flew and her thighs gripped tightly. She thought she could hear a familiar voice. The sound appeared to come from beneath her. But that was absurd. It had to be coming from somewhere along the canal. The voice continued. She looked down and the horse turned its head towards her. It was his teeth she recognised first. I knew you'd come, my Caledonian lovely. I knew you'd come. And admit it, it was me you wanted to ride all along, eh? She'd go easy on giving horses sugar lumps, though. It wrecks her teeth. With a scream, she tried to dismount, but found herself glued to the horse's back. Faster and faster he galloped along the canal, finally belting into the entrance of the tunnel that leads south to the city road basin. Craig had phoned later that day to say a belated happy Christmas, and was somewhat confused to get the answering service. Whilst in the tunnel underneath Islington, a mobile phone rang out, Scotland to Brave. <laughs>